So as the Nike project has progressed, I found the need to create some reference geometry to help support some later operations, as well as support some weaker parts of the model. Now these wings are one of those areas that need some added support. There are a series of advantages to working on a mesh over a solid or a surface. One of those advantages is the ability to pick any point on this mesh and use it as a auto cursor point for creating geometry. In this case, what I want to do is create a bridge surface that connects the two wings together as kind of a brace with the intent of finishing the, the feathered outside edges of the wings first and having material solid in between them, maximizing the support in between the wings. If I click on spline manual and check on our auto cursor settings, the first thing I want to do is make sure that along edges only is not checked on. Edges only is going to look for sharp edges of the mesh and allow you only to pick those edges for key points. In this case, I want to select any vertex in this mesh. So if I go to view facet edges, basically any one of these intersections can be used as a key point for creating a spline. What I want to do here is just make a kind of a rough spline that follows the contour of the inside of this wing. I'll basically do this for the left and the right wings and use a surface operation to loft these two together. So there's one rough spline. You can see it follows the perfect contour of the backside of that wing. Let's do the other one. I'm keeping the very tip of the wing exposed because when I'm programming this, I'm actually working on the outside surfaces of the wing and I'm working on the lip that goes all the way around. So ultimately, when I get rid of this bridge surface in between, all I have to do is work on the very easy flat surface of the inside of the wing. So here's about how I set that one up. And at this point, I can simply do a surface loft from one to the other. And I have this really nice, easy surface back here that gives me access again to the outside of the wings and to the perimeters of the wings on both sides. And this surface is going to be great for supporting these two wings while I'm roughing. One other piece of reference geometry that I needed here was a parting surface. And I needed this on the wings as well as on the dress back here, just to kind of divide a thin feature in half so I could focus on finishing the inside or outside of them at a time with a nice clean dividing surface to use as a trim or a backstop. In this case, I've gone and created basically the same sort of spline where this spline is created along the outside edges of this wing. Instead of lofting this together, what I'm going to do is create a power surface. If I power surface on this very 3D spline. It's not even closed on the end. You'll see it's open on both sides of this. I'm given something that looks okay. But at the same time, I can turn off trim outer and I'm given a nice square surface that follows that spline contour. I can also extend the surface outward, let's say by 10 millimeters or so. And one other thing that's really cool I can do here is give a little bit of an offset to the center of this. And what I want to do here is curl the surface using the center offset just enough to create a nice dividing surface that doesn't stick through on either side. So now I can program a waterline toolpath with the mesh as my drive surface and that surface set to avoidance. So that's going to be how I keep the tool always on the mesh and always inside of a nice cut without wrapping around the backside of the wing. Not only is this for the outside edge, I can actually use this exact surface on the inside as a clean core surface for programming a multi-axis finishing toolpath. Throughout the Nike project, I spent lots of my time working inside of mesh bodies, but it's still very important to know how to create surfaces because these surfaces are extremely important programming references.